Good evening. Two generations ago, Italy was racked by inflation, unemployment, political assassinations, and street violence watched by an impotent government. The Italians turned to Mussolini's fascist party in desperation. It took 20 years and the Second World War to dislodge the dictatorship that ensued. Today, again, Italy has inflation, unemployment, and an impotent government, political terrorism, and street violence. But the savior they may turn to this time is the Communist Party. For years, the dominant Christian Democrats, with full support from the United States, have tried to keep that big bad wolf outside the door. Now the Christian Democrat government has fallen. The Communists are demanding a place in a new government. Today, they're hinting they might even try to form a government themselves. The State Department on Friday issued a strong statement saying the United States did not favor communist participation. Moscow today accused Washington of gross and unseemly interference. Tonight, the communists at the door in Italy. Jim Lehrer is off this week. Charlene hunter gault is in Washington. Charlene? Robin, Italy's current political crisis is taking place alongside a wave of terrorism that has turned the streets of Italy's cities into battlegrounds. Riots, lootings, bomb explosions, kidnappings and assassination have almost become daily events. The deaths of three young neo-fascists last week brought to 34 the number of politically motivated killings over the last two years. And cold-blooded acts of violence that occur every few days include the mysterious practice of shooting victims in the legs as they walk down the street. The violence and the killing is the work of extremist political groups, mostly of the left, but also of the right, and splinter groups from all directions. 115 of such groups have been identified so far. The violence and unrest is occurring at a time of high unemployment and inflation. Italy has the highest youth unemployment in Europe and a jobless rate overall of about 8%. Prices are rising today at about 12%, down from 22% in 1976. But progress on the inflation front was made at the cost of economic growth and jobs. In this country of political turmoil, the Communist Party has been steadily growing. They've received 34 percent of the votes in the last election in June of 76. That makes the Communists the second biggest political party, topped only by the Christian Democrats who have ruled Italy since World War II and who received 38 percent of the votes last time. Locally, the Communists have been doing even better. They run about half of Italy's 92 provincial governments and almost all of Italy's large cities in the industrial north and the capital of Rome. Robin? First, let's take a little closer look at the nature and strength of the Italian Communist Party. Carlo Scarsini is the chief North American correspondent of ANSA, the Italian news agency. He comes from Venice, one of the cities with a communist government. Mr. Scarsini was in Italy over Christmas. Mr. Scarsini, why are the Italian communists so powerful? Well, uh, I would say that uh, there are three basic reasons. Whenever we examine the situation, the power, the influence of the Communist Party in Italy. We cannot uh, uh, ignore his... Uh, when uh, communists uh, entered the democratic process in Italy at the end of the war, uh, the country uh, had a heritage of poverty and uh, a background uh, of uh, poor labor legislation and a situation by which uh, millions of Italians, especially in the South, were lacking uh, the uh, elementary or intermediate benefits of life and uh, the party helped them to gain uh, some of these benefits and they, they, those people went screaming into the streets for, for a better life and they got it. In fact, the salaries in Italy have always been kept above the rate of inflation. So this is part of the one reason for their popularity. Uh, secondly, they, as you call them, uh, there is a different brand of communism in Italy because they are so intermixed and intermingled with all walks of life. Uh, culture, theater, movie world, uh, even the low levels of the church, there are sympathies and uh, some backing for the communists as the old story of uh, Peppone and Don Camillo, a very well-known tale of the post-war years. There was conflict. They fought, but they really liked each other. Right, they very much liked each other because they felt uh, or to be humanly on the same plan. So there is a kind of redeeming value if you put uh, your shoes, uh, if you put yourself in the shoes of the adversary. 
to justify the social impact of the Communist Party on Italian life. Is it true, as I've read, that uh, not only the working class, I think you just implied this, not only the working class, but business people and middle class people are now supporting the Communist Party in larger numbers? Well, yes, it is, uh, uh, in a way, this phenomenon can be compared to uh, a similar, though opposite situation, uh, which uh, happened in the year soon after the First World War, when uh, fascist was starting and the bourgeoisie and industrialists were backing fascism because of the fear of communism. But now it's the reverse situation. There is a fear of communism uh, and there is, in the eyes of many uh, uh, leading uh, industrialists and business people in Italy, there is a feeling that the, the leading political classes have been unable uh, basically, uh, notwithstanding the exceptional merits of some individual people, to uh, face and solve the problems of the country. Well, so they are having compromise. They are trying to compromise with a party which might be successful tomorrow. That leads me to my next question. Is it the failure of the Christian Democrats to solve Italy's many problems, or is it the performance of the communists in provincial and local governments, like your own city of Venice, which looks so good to some people that yes. they think they'd be able to do it on the national scene? I would say it's a mixture of the two things. Uh, uh, such an amount of uh, social, uh, political, industrial problems have piled up in the last 32 years in Italy due to the very rapid growth of the country uh, that both reasons can be attributed for the uh, a certain uh, reliability which uh, a large sector of the country would like to attribute to the communists even if they don't like him. The, the Italian communists appear to have bought some of the ideas of democracy, um, multi-party government, um, free elections, the um, competition in industry and the profit motive. Is that genuine or is that just a tactical well, maneuver? That's what they say and uh, it may be a tactical maneuver but uh, as you know uh, in your country in politics sometimes you have to deal uh, with uh, uh, face value statements uh, if you have to, po to play a political play. Uh, there is certainly still uh, a considerable doubt, but there has been a change. Even the Italian Prime Minister the other day was admitting that uh, Stalinism and Leninism are no longer the uh, daily bread of the today's Italian communists. There is certainly a change. Uh, after all, Italy, uh, one could say, has been vaccinated again, uh, dic against dictatorship by Mussolini, by, the yes, experience of Mussolini. By, by the experience of Mussolini, and uh, we are now one of the freest countries in the world, and the debate is very, we are not very pacific people, we are violent sometimes, but as Gianni Agnelli said the other day, if we had our Borgias, we also had our San Francisces, and uh, after all, change is the law of life, and we might give the benefit of the doubt, and... Uh, allow the communists to see them change. Well, thank you. Charlene? Last Friday night, former Secretary of State Henry Kissinger commented on the threat of communism in Italy. His remarks were made on an NBC News special. Here is an excerpt. If this slide towards communism is not arrested, the consequences will be grave for the entire West. The West may find itself with an ally which is at best unreliable and which may even take the Soviet side in a crisis. With us tonight is Helmut Sonnenfeld, who worked for the State Department and the National Security Council under Kissinger. During that time, his area of responsibility was European affairs. He is currently visiting scholar at Johns Hopkins University School of Advanced International Studies. Mr. Sonnenfeld, you heard the quote. Do you agree with your former boss? I think he said it very well. And uh, in saying that, however, I, I, I say also that um, he raised a very serious uh, problem that we and Italy's other friends have to ponder uh, with, um, with great gravity at this moment. And that is what? And that is the question of what Italy's orientation will be within the um, institutions uh, that uh, have grown up over the last generation with Italy's... You mean, uh, well, the North Atlantic Alliance, the European Alliance. Community, the um, Organization for um, Economic uh, Cooperation, the OECD, many other organizations which with Italy's own um, uh, major participation and considerable creativity have come into being as institutions um, 
and of the Western world, and I think therefore the the point that that uh, Kissinger made and in, in that quotation you cited as a, a valid and very disturbing one. Well, what exactly would be the threat? I mean, you've been in the Security Council where the threats surely <coughs> must have been analyzed. Can you tell us, without giving away any state secrets, specifically what concerns you about this communist participation? Well, I think it has to be remembered that the Italian Communist Party, despite the fact that in some respects it, it has a certain individuality and a, a history different from the Soviet Party and other communist parties, never was a supporter of this entire institutional framework that has come into being you mean in NATO. our Western world. Yeah. Well, NATO and the Those. European community, very important. Mm -hmm. um, and really the whole ethos that has come into being in the, in the Western world since the Second World War, they opposed all of it opposed it not only as Italian communists, but opposed it very often in the name of uh, the international communist movement. So their tradition has been one of hostility and opposition to uh, these um, uh, institutions, even though in recent years, recent months, there have been statements by Italian communist leaders, politicians, that show a greater tolerance and acceptance of these institutions, but they have no tradition of support. So one is bound to be concerned about what their role will be if they enter uh, the Italian government. Well, well, what specifically do you think they could do? I mean, what form could their opposition take that would, say, for example, cause the president to make the remarks that he's made? Well, there's been a... Uh, a substantial body of uh, accord in, um, among Western countries on a good many foreign policy questions. The Italian Communist Party on many of these questions, whether uh, relating to Africa or relating to um, uh, European issues, uh, has not been part of the mainstream of Western thought on this. There have been differences within the Western world, but there's mm -hmm. been a broad mainstream. So I think this would be one uh, a significant problem. We don't really know what their economic outlook is. At the moment, they talk very pragmatically, but we don't really know whether they will fit into the broad uh, mainstream of the European community and of the, uh, of the OECD. One doesn't really know what their ties precisely are to the Soviets. There's a good deal of evidence that they continue to have uh, considerable ties. So the question of how one deals with uh, this kind of a a possible government in NATO, where very sensitive military matters are uh, discussed, uh, would immediately be one that would have to be uh, raised. I think all these and many other very practical issues uh, uh, come up uh, very quickly on uh, once uh, communists enter the government, as they did in the case of Portugal, for right. example. So you're saying you're not exactly sure what the threat is, but there's a good no. possibility that uh, many of the things you've just talked about could happen. Well, that, we'll, we'll get back yeah. to that in just a moment. Uh, Robin? Let's get another view from Peter Lang, Assistant Professor of Government at Harvard, a research fellow at Harvard's Center for European Studies and a specialist in Italian affairs. Mr. Lang, um, as I indicated at the beginning of the program, in a recent article in the New Republic, Michael Ledeen said the collapse of the Christian Democrats is alarmingly reminiscent of the situation when Mussolini took power in the 20s. Is it in your view? Uh, <clears throat> no, I, I would argue that the analogy is uh, rather insidious uh, in two regards. First of all, uh, I don't believe that it's correct to speak of a disintegration of the Christian Democratic Party. I think, in fact, that uh, on the evidence, the Christian Democratic Party has shown a capacity for resistance and for assuring its place within the government, which is really quite remarkable given its actual record of performance. Uh, so the idea that there's somehow a crumbling of the political elite and the communists sweeping the field in the face of this crumbling elite, I think, is an inaccuracy, uh, and I think the present leadership of the Christian Democratic Party is not to be seen as some kind of crumbling, pusillanimous elite. Uh, the second uh, difficulty with the analogy, and one which actually Mr. Ledeen himself recognizes in his article, is that the communists, unlike the fascists, are not responsible for the crisis, and they're certainly not responsible for the terrorism. That is, the fascists played both ends of the stick. That is, they attacked the other political forces in the streets and then said we're the party of order the only way you can 
uh, you can uh, reestablish pieces to take us in because, after all, we're the ones who are responsible for the, uh, for the terrorism. Now, that is not the case now. Uh, the case now is that the communists have opposed very strongly the terrorism, have criticized groups to their left who have, been, who have not opposed it as strongly as they have. Uh, that is, groups not terrorist groups, but other leftist groups who they felt were being slightly conciliatory toward the, uh, toward the terrorists. Groups who think the communists themselves are becoming too bourgeois and betraying their ideological origins. Social democratic, origins. I think, is the term that's usually yes. thrust at them, or the left wing of the bourgeoisie is another. Yeah. <laughs> is Mr. Kissinger correct, in your view, in saying that the communists are implying that the communists in Italy would behave as communists have in other Eastern European countries? The idea being, I suppose, that they enter parliaments or governments um, democratically, then stay and take them over. Well, I in think, Yugoslavia, for right. example. I think that there are uh, uh, problems with that analogy as well. It's a bad night for analogies, but I think there are problems with that one as well. Uh, the fundamental one is that in Eastern Europe, there was a force which was rather important in that process, which was the Red Army. Uh, if there is no Red Army in Italy, and it's not likely to arrive there. And without the Red Army, uh, it's unclear that any of those processes would have been either undertaken or certainly solidified. So I think that the analogy between the communists coming into government as they did in Czechoslovakia, for instance, and then solidifying a hold on the institutions is really quite uh, an incorrect one. Now that doesn't mean, and I, I will probably come back to this, that one should not have questions, concerns, and the like. But uh, to view it as a kind of foregone conclusion or to take these historical analogies as giving you a clear lesson for the future about what would happen in the West rather than the East, I think, is uh, incorrect. Yeah. Um, do you feel that the United States should be alarmed at the prospect of the communists entering the Italian government and should state that alarm as publicly and explicitly as it has? I think that the United States uh, has a right to express concerns, which it has. Uh, I uh, depends a great deal on the timing. I think that uh, the expression of those concerns in a time of governmental crisis is really to quite interject an element into the crisis situation, which is very complex, which may be unfortunate. And I think, of course, that the United States, as a major ally, has the right to express let concerns. Me, let me put the question a uh, slightly other way. Does the United States have any power or leverage to prevent communist participation in a new Italian government? It has some, but it has the power of an elephant to sit on an ant. Uh, that is, we have power. We have enormous power which we could exercise. Power primarily economic, since I'm excluding for the moment uh, direct subversion or anything. We have enormous power. The IMF, we have a, a strong say in the IMF, and the IMF has been, at least up to the present, the very important. Monetary yes, funds. excuse me, has been very important uh, to Italy's um, economic posture. And American trade more generally is an extremely important component. So clearly we have power. But to exercise that power would be really to destroy the Italian economy. And, uh, but the fact is that uh, nobody liked that statement in Italy. Even the, the establishment, even the, the heads of the, of, the, of the party who are so friendly towards your country, even if they didn't say it openly, they didn't like it. There is a light, not very much public, uh, publicized statement by the Italian foreign minister in which he said, we know very well the American position. It has been uh, more or less the same for the last 30 years. And these uh, words and these warnings usually don't throw much light on our problems. Thank you. Charlene? Okay, Robin, let's get back to another analogy. Uh, Mr. Sonnenfeld, do you feel that the situation in 1978 is analogous to the one in 1922? Well, I don't think we should get hung up on um, analogies. I think the analogy... Uh, is there to the extent that there may be a sense in, in Italy that uh, something has to be done and we have to bring in some new force for order and, and action. But I wouldn't want to push any of the, uh, the analogies, uh, uh, historical analogies, um, uh, terribly uh, far with respect to 1922 and the March on Rome and, and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, l let me just ask um, Mr. Scarsini, uh, do you feel that the Italian communists are really playing possum and that when they, uh, if they get to a point where they can take control, they would do as Robin, you know, described earlier, th that is, behave as communists have done in the past? Well, we don't have any pre precedent uh, to be able to evaluate uh, this possibility. Uh, I would say that the communists have changed. I, I, I belong to 
uh, a kind of minority and there are some, some with me who believe that there has been a change in the party. Uh, we really don't know what will happen. This is the first experience of uh, sharing, uh, if it's going to be that, uh, a responsibility of government by a party, by the Communist Party, through and by democratic means. They assure us that they will step down uh, pacifically as they've, uh, they've stepped up, but uh, nobody can swear. and. Uh, we have to wait and see. Mrs. Steinfeld, are you as uncertain? Well, obviously, uh, there are questions about it. On the other hand, um, there are many earmarks of the Italian Communist Party that still bear resemblance to the to totalitarian Communist parties. For example? Uh, Mr. Longo, the chairman of the, the party just a couple of weeks ago, said this is a Leninist party. That means it's a centrally a highly centralized party, highly disciplined party, even though there are certain factions in it, and chances are that if the... Party, Mr. Sonnenfeld. Pardon? Mr. Longo is a very well-known single voice in the party to well, feel like Well, he's that. the chairman of the party, so you can't exactly ignore what he says. In any event, Certainly. chances are that this party, once um, in power in the central government, as indeed is happening in the municipalities and the regions, will seek to consolidate its position. And the question of how that party might again leave power later on becomes a, a also a serious question. So really, I don't... You mean you, you think the possibility they, that they would get there and, and not leave and not give it up? Well, one doesn't know precisely how this scenario will play out, but chances are that as a disciplined party, um, this party is going to try and solidify and consolidate its position in the administration and the ministries that it will uh, would take over under this um, uh, scenario and the, the question of whether it will leave power might become an academic question one doesn't one doesn't know one can't say these things for certain we're all talking really about our suppositions on this and my own personal supposition my own personal preference it's an Italian decision is that the, the communists in Italy um, should prove their devotion to democracy and opposition for a good deal longer. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Lang wanted to come in. Yeah, just. I wanted to ask him, what do you think about that? Well, I, I might, uh, might mention a, a couple of things. First of all, uh, it, is, it is clearly true uh, that the communists might uh, seek to uh, strengthen their position in local government. On the other hand, one needs to differentiate between doing what I think any party at any time attempts to do, which is to build power democratically and uh, seizing power uh, outside of the democratic institution. And it's a distinction we have to be careful about because otherwise we're really suggesting that if the communists behave like other political parties, they are somehow uh, not playing fair. On the other hand, uh, I don't want to suggest that there are no uh, questions to be raised. I would simply argue that there are also enormous constraints which uh, work against the communists attempting to, to e extra-democratically or undemocratically uh, seize power in Italy. And these constraints are both international and have to do with the position of Italy's allies, and they are as well domestic. And domestic they are the uh, fact, on the one hand, that the allies with whom the communists would have to govern will just be waiting for a chance to demonstrate that the communists are not playing democratically to throw them back out. I mean, one should have no illusions about the fact that the communists are being let in because everyone is so pleased to have them. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, people will be just waiting to, to find a chance to throw them out. And second of all, the communists are also constrained by their own followership because it's clearly a party which has now for uh, something like 20 years consistently declared with an evolution within that period that it will play by the democratic rules has also built a base, a membership, and a support which Certainly. accepts that as being the image of the party. And it would be, it, it, there are enormous costs involved in Simply Turner. This is not a party that's disciplined anti-democratically. This is a party which has won an enormous following, 12 and a half million voters and two million members on the basis of declarations about their, in fact, loyalty. Okay. So let's, Thank you. Robin? Yes. Let's just conclude this by asking this question. Starting with you, Mr. Sonnenfeld, might it not be more in the United States' interest to see an Italian government, even if it included the communists, capable of solving Italy's problems than to oppose that involvement and see Italy further disintegrate? Well, if you pose it that way, uh, you make the answer difficult. I don't think, however, that it is absolutely uh, 
inevitable that the situation in Italy would deteriorate further if the communists continue to re remain outside the government. The Italians themselves are talking about various possible um, uh, permutations and combinations that do not include the inclusion of communists um, in, uh, in the government. So I don't think you, you ought to approach this from the standpoint of these apocalyptic um, alternatives. Uh, that would be my, uh, my first answer. The second answer is that um, if your premise, your first premise is indeed correct, we should have absolutely no illusion, however, about the costs that are attached to it. And therefore, I think a government such as the United States and Italy's others, other friends are bound to make a judgment on balance as to uh, what the costs and the potential uh, benefits of the evolution are. And my own view, particularly since I don't believe that the string has run out um, uh, in Italy, uh, my own judgment would be that the costs would be substantial. Well, major costs um, in these other areas that we discussed earlier, and, and therefore I certainly would not uh, take a positive view such as the one that you suggest. Right. I'd like to get both of you in briefly. Do you see the um, uh, uh, continuation of the same old kind of government as meaning further disintegration of your country? Or are you more oh, optimistic as oh, Mr. Oh, yes. Uh, there is? must be a change, though a very minor change. The scenario that we have today indicates that uh, uh, by using the scale of the chemist, uh, Mr. Andriotti, who is in charge to solve this problem, and most probably will, and by the way, let's not forget that uh, your president called him the most refined politician I know, so we, are, we have some reason to be hopeful. He will, uh, in, uh, he will add, he will put into the new, uh, quali not coalition, it will be, we don't know exactly the balance, uh, pe people who are more inclined to understand the reasons of the communists. Not physically members of the party in the cabinet, but people uh, being... Which is a further step. So which will be a little further step. All the right. problem is the dimension of the step, measure of the step. I'm afraid we don't have time to come back to you. I'm <laughs> sorry. Thank you very much, Mr. Sonnenfeld. Good night, Charlene. Good night, Mr. Lang, Mr. Scarsini. Thank you. That's all for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow night. I'm Robert McNeil. Good night.